This is our gigantic solar dehydrator that we built. It is currently filled with blueberries that have been in there for a few days, about 36 to 48 hours of sunlight, and they are ready to come out. Super simple concept, we're just using the sun and the greenhouse effect to dehydrate food. With the addition of a nice little fan to get the air moving. We decided to make the solar dehydrator to expand our capacity to dehydrate more vegetables. We already have two electric dehydrators going almost full time in the house, and we just wanted to expand our capacity by using this solar dehydrator. We basically doubled the amount of food we can be dehydrating at once. And it also allows us to not heat up the house as much on these really hot days. We're just using the heat from the sun and not throwing more into the house. The process to make this was super simple. The legs for the base are made of an old cedar post. And the frame for the base is made from slabs that we salvaged from a local sawmill. The main frame for the unit is made of 2x6 SPF lumber. Then there is an inner frame which is made from 1x2 SPF lumber. And is used to hold the tray. The tray is identical to the 1x2 inner frame. And then we staple some wire mesh for the tray bottom. A half inch 4x8 plywood sheet was then cut to size to fit the bottom of the unit. We added three 1.5 inch holes to one of the smaller ends of the unit for ventilation. On the other end of the unit, we're using a small 12 volt fan to draw in fresh air and to remove moisture. The fan was added to the other side of the unit in order to draw air through the unit. This fan is powered by a small solar panel and it is available on Amazon. The link is in the description. We used a dryer vent then to aim the airflow towards the ventilation holes on the other side of the unit. The 2x6 frame sits inside of the base frame, which again is made with the cedar post and the slab wood. The screen tray then fits on top of the inner 1x2 frame. A really heavy repurposed patio door makes the top of the dehydrator unit. Because it is so heavy, it causes an airtight seal with the unit. Not a lot of air is escaping between the solar patio door and the unit. The small solar panel sits nicely above the unit using this telescoping pole that is held in place with a couple of clips. We're able to reach some pretty high temperatures in here. Currently, it is just under 170 degrees Fahrenheit, or about 75 Celsius. We repurposed a large patio door for the top of this unit. There's two panes of glass and all this moisture you see is not in the unit, it is between those two panes of glass, which is really just a cosmetic issue. It does not affect the dehydration process. So although the setup is very simple and there might be some tweaks that we could do to make it a lot more efficient, this is getting to temperatures high enough, if not almost too high already, for dehydrating purposes. This is not a solar oven, this is a solar dehydrator. To get the air moving in there, to get some moisture out of there, or to reduce the temperature, we have a solar fan. And as you can see, this quickly lowers the temperature in there because we're pulling in cool air from below the unit. But sometimes we don't want the temperature to drop, so we came up with an idea of adding a black box for the air to heat up in first before being pulled into the unit. This way we're pulling in air that is within a few degrees of what's already in the dehydrator. That's hot. 120 in there. Let's have a look at the primary heater that we decided on for this unit. 
But first, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, Membrane Solutions and their water straw and water squeeze system. These things are great to have when you're out in the wilderness and you don't want to carry a lot of water with you. They filter 5,000 liters of water each. The water straw is just everything contained in this unit and you just directly suck the water through the straw. There is a replaceable filter inside of the unit. The water squeeze system, which has the straw as well as a squeeze bag where you fill up this water thing and then you just suck right through. There's also a lid for the bag if you want to fill up for later. With these devices being so small and light, it's easy to keep one in your pack at all times when you're going for a hike or anything, just in case you run into an emergency situation where you need water. If you're interested in buying these, there's a discount code in the description. And if you follow that link, you'll actually help the channel out a little bit as well. This primary heater does not need to be used for everything, but it increases the number of items that we can dehydrate that need higher temperatures. We fiddled around with a bunch of setups, including a long cloth covered triangular contraption. That didn't end up creating enough heat, so then we added a black bucket to the end, which again just wasn't that great for maintaining higher temperatures. We did find that when the bucket sat on its end, it maintained a much higher temperature. So we added a pipe from the bucket to the fan. This allows for a large amount of air to heat up in the bucket. That's hot. Before being pulled into the unit by the fan, causing the temperature not to drop as much. These blueberries are finished, so I have my assistant here to help me take the lid off. This is quite heavy. And then we'll have a look at some of the other things that we have dehydrated in this unit. So this is what dehydrated blueberries look like. It's a great way to store your harvest in a small amount of space as an alternative to freezing and making preserves. The blueberries took about 36 hours of sunlight to dehydrate, which is about the same amount of time it takes in our Excalibur dehydrator. One of the vegetables that we dehydrate is zucchini to make zucchini flour for baking and for adding as a thickening agent to add to our cooking. Super simple process. We just slice the zucchini very thin and then grind it once it's dehydrated to make a, a flour, a powder. The zucchini took about 16 hours of sunlight across two days to dehydrate in this dehydrator. You know the zucchini is done when the slices are not flexible and crush up when you touch them. We're also using this to make sun-dried tomatoes. We're loading this up right now with a whole bunch of different smaller tomato varieties. To make dehydrated tomatoes, we just slice them about a quarter inch thick, spread them out on the dehydrator tray. After a full day in the sun, we flip the tray around in the dehydrator. The end of the dehydrator that's further away from the fan is warmer than by the fan, and areas that are in the shade, like as you see on the right there, do not get as hot as the areas that are fully exposed to the sun. So items in that area do not get as dehydrated as fast. After rotating the tray, we also flipped all the tomato slices over. If you haven't tried sun-dried tomatoes, especially ones that are made from cherry tomatoes. They are super delicious, very intense flavor, very sweet, they're very good. These will still be slightly flexible when they are done, but they will be nice and crisp and there'll be zero moisture left. These cherry tomatoes took about 20 hours of sunlight to dehydrate. These times will change depending on how much humidity is in the air and how intense the sun is at what sun angle. The tray cleans up very easily with a blast of water from a hose. Now this dehydrator, because it relies on solar radiation and the greenhouse effect, it is not ideal for everything that you might be dehydrating. For example, herbs, which will bleach if you expose them to the sun. They are much better off dehydrated in a typical dehydrator at low heat or just hanging in a dry, dark area. So that about wraps it up for the solar dehydrator. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments. 